Slabben under, section three. So we can see down here as we're going down, um, we're covering each one of these and they're all in a segment. So we'll try to make that as uh, succinct as possible. Um, so number one, overview of the assessment, read and interpret the engineer's footing plans and specifications, identify and estimate the following. So number one, read and interpret the house plans set coupled with the engineer's plans to identify footing sizes and lengths. Now, this is really important because if we don't have that, then we get ourselves in a little bit of a pickle and uh, so the first thing that I have to do is um, before you, I think, I believe it was preliminary requirements, we actually came down here and we looked at uh, an engineer's report. But the other one that we could look at is this fellow here, engineering plans of footings and slabs. So I'm going to open that up and it's a very simple um, this is, I guess, if you said under notes, you could replace that with specifications and you've got general notes, earthworks and preparations, foundations, concreting, reinforcement, plumbing requirements, site maintenance. And we've got a service trench and a little bit of information around, centred around that from the soil report as to compact and select filling, bedding sand, and some of the uh, things that we actually need. Now, the next part is generally, this is what you get. Okay, just a basic plan with a plan view of where the strip footings go. Um, it will tell you that it's actually SF1 and SF2, and this over here is SF2. Uh, for whatever reason, okay, there is one very good reason, but all of these, this one, this one, this long run through here, which is 7,240 between brickwork to brickwork, plus 600, so 7,840 is the length of the SF2 through here. And then we have this particular uh, strip footing, which is a deepened beam at 700 deep, actually goes right through to the dashed line. And you'll notice this shaded area through here is the area where the dam was. And so on that basis, this was all um, piers right through here, which is a very unusual detail uh, for a home. Now, this is an engineer's plan. It's not the actual um drafter and if you looked at this and came up to here you would say okay we've got a hundred plus we've got a strip footing beam which is 400 so 500 deep now that distance from there to there looks pretty much that distance from there to there but anyhow all right over here um this is the exploded drawings that the engineer has made and he's made a little bit of a blue here um, this is massively deep. If that's 100, you'd have to say that's about there somewhere. There's another 100 there. Um, we've actually nominated that that would be 150 uh, because that's in uh, Victoria, that's standard. In South Australia, it's only 30 mil. So it's a totally different system. So the house is much off up the ground a fair bit more. And then we've got some other interesting aspects where you've got this entire slab sitting on top of all of these piers. Um, some significant information that we need to take on board. Um, number one, all external corners. So it just says at all corners. So we'll allow external and internal. There is a 500 by 500 uh, reinforcing rod N12 that is actually tied to the mesh, to the trench mesh, to lock that together. Okay, just one. There's not three of them, there's only one. And the whole idea is to actually lock that together. Um, articulation joint, which is uh, basically the gap in brickwork, and this is what helps stop brickwork from cracking 
And then also through here, there's an edge beam where it says that straddle all rectangular openings using overlapping diagonally placed N12 bars. And so there's a couple of those and, and we'll point those out. Additional panels of trench mesh over the top of wherever there are actual pipe work coming through the actual footing. Okay, uh, now I made the uh, comment before about there's a significant reason and a, a significant difference between SF1 and SF2. And what it is, is you'll notice in SF2 that we've got two N12 rods, top and bottom in SF2. In SF1, we've actually got none. There's no rods at the bottom. There's no rods at the top. Uh, I don't know why they bothered. But nevertheless, this is a good elevation through here as well. And it actually shows you that the actual piers are down to a certain distance. And so when I set this course up five, six years ago, I actually measured this, scaled this off of this section through here and worked out the size of the piers so that we know what we actually have and so there's another drawing so when we get to reinforcing and uh, we actually have a look at that you can pick that up so this is quite vital and it's something that we would actually use notice found minimum 300 mil into natural ground so if there's field ground this has to go down deeper if it's um, uh, if it's greater than that 300 mil all right i'm going to shut this down and now we're going to have a look through here. Engineer's report, I recommend that you actually have a look at it. And um, down here is actually the uh, takeoff template to input all your figures. So, so far, all right, we, we haven't actually looked at anything else except piers and slab. And so what we can do is actually go straight through here, click on this earlier today um this actually just would not open so this is the um qes um, standard details that as a student you can download which tells you every assessment that you are involved what you need to do to comply with the course and so it has um, the 21 uh, aspects of reading and interpreting plans we won't go through every one of those or else i'll be here till eight o'clock tonight um, you can actually read all of this and already you should have watched a video of um, the knowledge questions which I've already put together uh, following each of these through in detail. Now the reality is it has to stay in this template. Okay, and, and so this particular section here, six, is actually a set of questions that are in the learn and they are a, a learn quiz and you've got 10 attempts but i don't think you'll need 10. Um, there's 30 questions i don't expect you to fill these out these are in learn okay and so you can follow that and then we've got some more regulatory stuff which is out of this is all the new questions in the as 1684. Uh, home price comparison i just finished that and uh, here's a copy of the expected schedule and it's slightly different on the main page. Now, here we are at the actual uh, point of um, slab and under. Now, there's a couple of things here that are really important for you to understand. Number one, this is your blank takeoff and the template is made in such a way that all you have to do is, for example, here, put your total lineal meters of vertical strip footings here total lineal meters of horizontal strip footings and add the two up together and you can basically then work out your total cubic meters of concrete for your vertical and horizontal strip footings there's also the dimensions for the SF1 and 2, which is just basically the concrete, 700 by 300. And all you need to do is to calculate the lineal meters 
of that. And every estimator has different methods and different ways uh, to actually do that work. Now, the red totals are basically the totals that uh, are needed and will go into the Excel spreadsheet. Uh, some of these are the black just means that they are used to actually get that meter rate, that cubic meter rate. And then we've got the step down, uh, how much concrete that is. It's 150 by 150. And you all you need to do is calculate the total lineal meters of that, put that in here, and then here goes in how much actual cubic meters of concrete. Um, and if you think about this, this is coming out. So this is a negative figure. So it has a minus at the uh, front of it. All right, the slab area, okay. Uh, the slab, we break that down into three uh, distinct parts and we work that out. Uh, the piers, we actually work out. And so there they are, there's the lengths and there's the actual piers. Then what you have to do, and uh, most people actually go into the uh, calculator, calculator soup that I've provided, and you can go into there under columns and put in the right criteria and basically it will work out exactly how many cubic meters for the piers. Okay, so there's 26 at 1.2, 6 at 1800, 4 at 24, 5 at 3 meters and another 4 at 3 meters just in a different section. Excuse me. Uh, this happens all the time. All right, now finally you've got a chamfer to calculate. And we need, once you've calculated your chamfer, you put those figures into there. Now, okay, doubling up, now you actually need to put all those figures through here, add the whole up, and you should, you should get a, a cubic meter uh, concrete total of uh, over 40 cubic meters. All right, it's more than that, but that's what we're looking at. That's concrete. That's all you have to do. Excuse me. So that's not actually all that difficult, but there's a process to go through with that. Then next week, we actually start to look at reinforcing. Now, I'm not going to actually jump uh, down to reinforcing. I'm just going to minimize, or I can't minimize it actually. So, um, but this is actually how your takeoff works all the way through. And so, uh, what I'm going to get you to do is to take the uh, from this page here um, copy right down to the very end of the actual sheet and put that into another word doc and that will be the document you fill in and then the idea of that is because when i get you to upload all the time i don't want you to have to download all of these it just slows everything right down OK, and at the end of the day, when you're doing an upload, which is around the end of carpentry, um, it's much easier when I can just go through to you and say, OK, just copy and paste everything from uh, the start to the end of carpentry and any working sheets you have, we put that in between and I will explain that as we go. But then in the middle of the semester, I can actually mark some of this work. And because generally um, this year will be a piece of cake because the numbers are fairly low, um, but generally I have at least 60 plus students. And so uh, doing 60 lots of estimating marking at the end of the year, uh, is it any wonder that my hair is silver? Um, okay, so um, that's really where that goes. And you can actually see right down here, uh, document, okay, document one, it's version one. And, and so this is the new unit. And so um, as we go through, and if you do find anything that you think is wrong or anything like that, flick me an email, uh, take a snip image, use a snip tool and just say, oh, I don't know about this bit here and snip it and send me a message. OK, and then um, basically, uh, ultimately, what we want is a course that runs well. And that's what we're always trying to do. Now, you can see 
how quick that can take. So if we're really having a look at this, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine items that we put together. All right, so it's not that difficult. Now, there are different ways to do this. And now what I'm going to do is actually uh, close this one down. I'll just go back over to here. And I want to actually uh, have a look at a couple of things in regards to uh, our slab and under. So we come down here and you'll actually find this particular document. You'll also find this one here. So we'll look at this first because this is the bare bones um, type of uh, document that you would actually look at. Uh, through them, we just go save and up it comes. Now, the reason being that it's doing that is because um, I'm actually doing this from home. All right, so again, here's all those documents. And then when we go through here, there's a couple of little changes I've put in. And the types of things I've gone is said, right, allow 1200, allow 18, allow 24, allow three meters, allow three meters. Now, that is in the extent of the dam. The rest allow 1,200. So these along here, 1,200. And I reckon they've missed one here. Okay. But this is the type of stuff that goes on. And so whenever we're doing this, um, and the reason for these piers is because you've got unsound ground. And so that's quite an important aspect of the job. And so next page, you can actually see where I'll put here, allow 150 step down. Here's the slab. And I think this is an engineer's drawing. I think he's made a blue because this to me looks more like uh, 200 rather than 150. Because if this is 100 and then to me, this looks at least double what that is. OK, so but we've chosen to use 150 uh, by 150 and that way there we can cover it. So there are some key component trees around this in regards to uh, reinforcement around every uh, reinforcement cage, every corner, external, internal. There's actually a 500 by 500 lap bar. Um, there's some interesting information in regards to where our peers are and uh, also the difference between uh, the uh, SF1 and SF2. And you can actually see there it is there. Okay, right through like so. And so that's SF2 and then SF1 doesn't have any. Um, and so that's the reason for those two differences, just these four bars, two N12s, uh, and those N12 bars are actually fastened to the three L12 trench mesh here and here. So there's no reinforcing cage as such. And so that's quite interesting. Okay, so we can actually close that down. And now what I want to do is actually show you um, another part of the, um, some of the girls that actually took the course last year when I was on uh, long service leave, actually put together a little PowerPoint and I think, it's actually well worthwhile having a look at. So it's just called concrete slab on ground. Won't take uh, take long to add up. Um, and it's actually using some of my original stuff and some of their own uh, to actually make this a bit easier uh, to operate. So when we're actually looking at size wise, I mean, I guess we could actually go a bit bigger, okay so that we can just scroll down and I'll just go page to page because other than that, it's just, will it go down? All right, so this is our main plans. There's a couple of key dimensions here um, and it doesn't actually have all of those, but basically this 3200 is actually from here through to here, but for SF1, it continues another 300 mil. So that beam goes underneath the strip footing. All right, really a key point. Same with this one here. 
the strip footing actually runs from the edge of the uh, the concrete or the brick pier, okay, which is right on the edge of the concrete, and then straight through, and then it actually goes another 300 mil. So it goes 300 onto that, so that's 2175. Okay, and then when we're working out that length, that's an absolute key, how we actually do that. Now, our dimensions are really important, and uh, we can basically come back a bit now, and you can see that. Now, we'll scroll up, and you can see where uh, the girls have actually put some measurements and dimensions here, and they've just done nice shading. Uh, my shading's a bit harsh, so we'll see that in a minute so the depth of the slab they've got actually the lengths and obviously uh, in my case my original powerpoint i did all the vertical uh, strip footing beams first and uh, there they are there and then second we did all in between each one okay so that we know where they are so if we were to come down here um and you notice this is your pro, pro uh, mainly it is actually for all your dimensions so that you know that there's 3300 between this edge and this edge and you also know it's two meters and 50 from that edge to that edge all right and that's important um, it's always been there there it is there two meters and 50 33 and that, so this is actually a direct copy of what i made uh, five or six years ago and so what we're actually doing is calculating the lineal meters of A and B. Now, the only flaw I see in this, you need to look at your plan. And I think it's 10 meters and 63 or something like that is the total length from here to here. OK, and we would have one, two, three, four, five at that size. OK. And so they're 10 meters and 69. All right. And so how many A's? All right. And so you need to actually put um, the the actual uh, five at 10 meters and 69, which is going to be obviously going to be 50 something. And then the B's are actually 1800 less. So you look at the plan and this is the width of the veranda. Uh, the slab finishes here where I'm, my mouse is. and Basically here to the outside. So um, this is 8269. Okay, so that's been put in there and uh, also says that 300 is the width of the strip footing and 400 is the depth of the strip footing. <coughs> okay, in between here from there to there is 835. And you can see there 835 from there to there so it's a nice little drawing and it actually gives us um, all the engineers will love this one all the carpenters will love this one all right now what we actually have is some color coded uh, be uh, color coded um, work here and you can see all the greens and then what they've even gone further than what I would have done um, I just went red everywhere but you can actually go through and say, rightio, uh, over here, um, we've got eight at two metres and 50. Where do we get the two metres and 50? There it is there, and there it is there. How did I do it? You got from this, this distance here to this distance here is five metres. You take off 300, 600, 900. That's 4.1. You divide 4.1 into two. You get two meters and 50, and you have two, four, six, eight. So eight at two meters and 50. So when you think about it, it's, it's reasonably simple. Now these over here, um, the CAD drawing that I drew, uh, basically came in and said two, two thirteen, two, two thirteen, two, two thirteen, and then it goes one mil different. But um, uh, I think you just leave it at 2213 and you've got 369. So 9 at 2213. Now, here's our 835. Okay, so you've got one of those. Now, what the uh, girls have done here is 2160 and you've got 3. 1, 2, 3. So in a very quick fashion, we've actually managed to, to break down 
the actual slab and the strip footings in a um, a colour coded fashion. But generally, all you get is a drab grey thing, and you do have to do something with it. And so it used to be either you'd use a highlight pen or or something like that. And and a lot of the old time um, estimators wouldn't even do that. So uh, it was not acceptable for me to use coloured pens, for example, when I did my estimating back 50 years ago. So things have changed. All right. So now we, we've got the horizontal beams and you can actually do your final total. All right. And we are looking at this one, how many lineal metres. And this is the part that goes into the um, into the takeoff. Then over here, all right, the chamfer is that little 45 there. Now, the chamfer is calculated as being 100 by 100 square divided by 2. And so around the inside perimeter of each one of these is 10.7 lineal metres of uh, chamfer. And so what we actually do is actually go through there and say, rightio, these two are 10.7, 10.7. Um, this is 3,300, this is 26. This is 2,669, you know, like it's very similar, but for these four. And then you can actually do the same working out through here. Um, and so you've got sort of like around about 4,160 or something like that. Now, what they've done is it's gone through here Two meters and fifty. There it is. There plus thirty-three hundred times four. Okay, and uh, you end up with twenty-one point four uh, lineal meters. Okay, over here, two meters and fifty by twenty-six hundred, and you actually do each one of these. Now, once you've worked those all out, okay, you come up with a total, and you just times that. Uh, 0.1 and divide by 2. Okay, and we end up with a cubic meter of amount of concrete. It's not huge, it's not a big amount, but the reality is um, it's actually concrete because in the act of actually putting the Fortacon over the top of the ground and down into the strip footing beams, you actually end up with this chamfered cutoff. And it adds up to quite a bit of concrete. From memory, well over half a cubic metre, which is a lot of concrete. Okay, so that's your next section. And so you could actually follow some of these there. That will make it life a bit easier. And then we get to SF1 and SF2. Now, those are 300 wide, 700 deep. And so there it is there. And I also had a, a 300 dimension somewhere. And now what we can actually have a look at, you can see the SF1 runs from here to here. OK, and so SF1, all right, is interesting. So you've got 3,500 um, and you need to actually put what that is. So if you've got 35 plus 300, OK, so 35, 6, 7, 8, 3,800, 3.8. And then you can put that in. Or you've got this 4160 that goes from there to there. So whatever your choice, how you work that out. And then put those figures in. And then we can actually enter those into your takeoff. And there should be a certain lineal metre rate of all the strip footing beams, SF1 and SF2. All right. So all the rest are SF2. And there we are. Now, pretty much, we're actually getting to the slab calculation. So first of all, the slab is actually three sections. And so section one, section two, section three. Now, I do exactly the same, except mine were grey. And over here, this looks more like what mine was. And basically, there's the actual uh, calculations for this one here. Then you've got the calculations for this one here. And then you've got the calculations for this section here, just across here, across there. So this is five meters by 1.8. This is 2760 by 1.8. Okay, and this is 15, oh yeah, 15 meters. It works out, which is a bit fluky, 
because it's a round, uh, you know, like it's a round figure. So you check your sizes and just make sure that we got that right. And there's a whole heap of sequences. So you can work out B and where I've got these little tiny red arrows, that's where B runs and all, all little red, uh, almost like a, a, um, a comma. Um, okay, now peers and beams. Um, you will never get a plan like this. These are notes that you would have to put on your layout drawing. And uh, and that was what I used to get students to do. And But it could be all over the shop. So first of all, here you can see 12, 18, 24, 3 metre, 3 metre. Uh, consult the engineer's report to verify all details. Detail A shows the finishing height of the pier. And then basically, you then actually go. And so what the girls have done is actually dotted these so that you follow them. All right, so reds are 2.4, and they're only in the area where the dam was. So one, two, three, four. Um, now, the rest of these are three meters because it gradually gets deeper and deeper. So one, two, three, four, five. And so you add the whole lot up of the greens and just put a, a figure in here and then calculate the total lineal meters of uh, peers and then actually go into calculator soup not soup calculator and have a look here and look under round column now i would not be working these out individually uh, i'm pretty sure that it's up around the high 70 lineal meters and so what you would do is after you've added these all up, put them into here, the height in meters. OK, so, um, you know, let's just say it's 78 lineal meters. Don't use that figure. You need to calculate this first. Put that into there, times it by 0.45, which is 450 diameter, and uh, also uh, the number of those. And it will actually work out the total uh, cubic meters of, of concrete. All right, now, once you do that, all right, you've got in the takeoff, um, the vertical beams, horizontal beams, the chamfer, SF1, SF2, the slab, less the step down, and then we will end up with a total cubic meter of concrete that will cover uh, slab and under. Okay, so pretty much that's where we are. Now, I used to actually have a single sheet for concrete, another sheet for reinforcing, and you can imagine all these sheets. Now, the idea was they were supposed to have been uh, cut and paste onto a Word doc. Some people could do that quite successfully, and some people couldn't. And so, and then you get the others who just uh, do the sheets and save them to a flash flash drive. And when I say, okay, everybody get your concrete out and you've got a portion of the class rummaging through a whole heap of files. And if they don't have good file management, um, that's an absolute disaster. All right, so there you are. That is up to concrete. And so uh, we will be actually starting that next week okay so this coming uh, wednesday and uh, and also external students and this just keeps on rolling okay so if you keep to this and work your way through it um, it's going to make life very easy for you um, don't fall behind okay uh, you will have the videos to follow and everything else like that but wherever possible try to keep on track and uh, we will find out exactly where we're going and uh, that will be fantastic. All right, thank you very much for your time. And I hope that that actually is, is reasonable for you to do. There's a little construction calculator there, okay? Um, this is actually really good. So this can go into your digital library. Um, there's also, um, next week we actually start to work on reinforcing now reinforcing has its own share of complexities but but 
if you did a great job of this first section, then you have all the lineal links for the reinforcing. And this is where um, estimators have little tricks that they can actually use and drag in and go, yeah, well, I know that I've got so many lineal meters and that will then simply mean I don't have to work it out. I just drag that figure in and times it by the number of trench mesh or, or Y12 bars or anything like that. So we can actually look forward to that. And I will try to give, give you everything you can to actually make you successful about what you are doing. Okay, thank you very much.